Hey, it's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to talk about corporate wellness. Corporate wellness is going to become a huge thing and it kind of already is. There is a couple leading businesses, one is Rycar Automotive, that is tying in corporate wellness to reduce injury rates, enhance employee wellness, and make sure that the longevity of not only the employee but the business in general is doing really well. So I'm going to show you a couple of key pieces that you're going to need in a wellness program in order for you to see not only injury results, but better compliance. The first thing you're going to need is some way to squat. The hard part is, is that for a corporate place, sometimes you're not going to have spotters. And that's where something like the winning belt squat machine is going to be a huge factor in order for you to be able to not only squat but do it effectively and safely. What I like about the machine that we make is that it's a one-to-one -one ratio and it has a built-in spotter unlike a lot of the other machines that are on the market. And we've talked about that. So if you want to look at the winning belt squat, then go on the YouTube channel and scroll down and you'll find videos on the, the actual belt squat and its function and uses. There's a lot more uses to it than actually just belt squatting which also makes it a big value and bank for your buck as far as square footage in a smaller facility. The next thing you're gonna need is a basic squat rack with catches and J hooks and pull up bars and all that type of stuff. There's all kinds of different companies that do that. Dynamic Strength and Fitness is probably one of the top companies in the world for that. So go check them out on their website, but you definitely need a squat rack. Now, the next thing you're gonna need is some specialty bars, trap bars, safety bars, all these other types of things are going to allow you to not only train people, but train people that might have some bumps, bruises, injuries, both past and present that you may need. Now, the next thing you're probably going to need, because if we look at general statistics, almost 85% of the population is going to have some form of lower back problem. But what you don't find is reverse hypers in those facilities. So what we do here at Record Automotive and other corporate places that we train on fire departments and things of that nature is we all require them to have reverse hyper machines. Now the reason is that reverse hyper machines not only strengthen the areas in which are most commonly an issue, they also make sure that the traction becomes available to the spine. So a lot of these guys here at Record are sitting at a desk a lot. They're on phone calls a lot. So they're sitting and then that lumbar spine is getting compressed so a lot of the things that you want to do in a corporate wellness training protocol is you want to try to find either non-compressive or traction-based movements. Now the next exercise or piece of machinery that you're probably going to need is a glued ham raise. Now the glued ham raise is going to be one of those machines that you're probably not going to be able to start off the actual glued ham raise at a corporate wellness thing. It's kind of an athletic type movement, but what you can do is the bottom end of the back extension. Now what I like about the, the, um, the glued ham raise is that you can utilize it to get all those muscles strong as a reverse hyper, but it also can isolate a little bit more glute activation, and it's a little bit more taxing than the reverse hyper. Now, the next piece of machinery you're gonna need is a vast array of dumbbells. Now, for most people in the corporate wellness scene, you're probably not gonna need dumbbells higher than 60, 70 pounds. And the reason you're only gonna need them that heavy is for straight-legged deadlifts and things of that nature. But what you're wanting to increase with corporate wellness is volume. So intensity is really not a massive you know, issue to do with, with corporate wellness. What you need to do is increase volume. So what we do is we implement the winning warmups like what we do at pro football teams, firemen. We use that with normal people, general populations. And what we found is an increase in ligament, tendon, and bone density, which is all important for injury reduction, but also starting to increase the amount of muscle tissue that is dormant on the body, therefore increasing resting metabolic rate. Now for those of you that don't know, resting metabolic rate is the amount of calories you burn without exercise. That is one of the most crucial numbers that you can change as a corporate wellness person because resting metabolic rate is going to allow you to burn more calories sitting down. And if you look at most corporate wellness jobs, although they might be physically or I'm sorry, emotionally or mentally challenging, they're not burning a lot of calories. So when you're designing a corporate wellness program, you want to make sure that you have these different pieces and that you're utilizing them correctly. What you're going to start to find is that these types of pieces are going to be crucial to lowering injuries and increasing retention with the employees. Now the last but certainly not the least most important factor is making sure that you're tying in education with diet. We use a metabolic analytics that was originally designed by Charles Pollock and we measure every employee to give them a nice screenshot of what their body's doing and what the problems are and what the biggest issues are that they need to fix. It could be a sleep issue, it could be a carbohydrate or insulin issue, 
It could be a low testosterone or high estrogen issue. And at the end of the day, it could be a toxicity issue. Um, if you're dealing with mechanics and things like we do here at Riker Automotive, what you're gonna find is the guys around oils, the guys around metals all the time tend to throw toxic codes. So their supplementation needs to be based on trying to reverse or at least stop the process of those things becoming harmful. Now on the diet side of things, obviously it's not rocket science, but what you start to find is that trying to reduce the amount of skipping meals, right, which would be your classic fasting or doing these types of things, is not conducive because what ends up happening is they go home and eat poorly because they haven't eaten properly all day. I find that if you put people on a structured diet regimen, including breakfast, which I've talked about a lot on my Instagram channel, um, breakfast is huge because it starts the metabolic process off correctly and in my opinion starts to create the proper cravings which should be for proteins and fats and not carbs. So if you skip breakfast or you have a high carbohydrate breakfast then the body thinks that carbohydrates may be available all day and that is a massive problem. So what you want to do is start eating proteins and fats so the body uses that as the main energy source and starts to transfer things over and not affect the insulin process. So if you want to lower body fat in a corporate wellness thing, which is going to change hypertension, it's going to change resting heart rate, and it's also going to change body fat, then you might want to start looking at how to control carbohydrates or at least limit the type of carbohydrates you're taking in. So the first thing we do at a corporate wellness type program is we start reducing wheat, obviously gluten products, and dairy. And what we have found is even here at Riker, I've only been here for a little more than a month, we have out of the seven or eight people that are participating in this one particular hour, five of them have already lost 15 pounds. Now that's 15 pounds in one month and that you, it's a vast difference. And a lot of that change is gonna be coming from inflammation. In my opinion, the dairy and the gluten are gonna be massive inflammation, uh, poor properties and poor selections in diet. And once you pull those things out and start adding the proper activity level, what you'll start to find is that the body will actually change in the proper mechanism. So just my point is is just attacking a corporate wellness thing on just one side of physicality or one side of diet is not necessarily the right way to do things the right way to do things is to attack everything in a 360 degree type fashion where you're attacking not only habits of working out but habits outside of the gym if you want to learn more we have manuals that kind of describe the diet process and more workouts so you guys can select smarter and better exercises to train if you have minimal equipment or the top shelf stuff like Riker Automotive does. So go to winningstrength.com, check out some of our videos, and check out some of our manuals.